I'm going to rate the best maps according to the internet. Let me know if you agree. So here's where you'd expect me to look at these two flags on YouTube and go, <gasps> uh, you know, and, and braid them. But I kind of want to add some context to this. The US was concerned about the focus on pesticides from this resolution and also that the resolution discussed uh, trade when it wasn't set up to uh, adequately discuss those sorts of issues. Having said that, the US also objected to the transfer of technology that would come along with this resolution. And hopefully that'll give you some sort of indication as to how I'm going to treat these maps. I'm going to add insight. Oh, it's going to be so good. Designed to shock people. Uh, two out of ten, because at least it shows information. But the French are dumb. Like, <laughs> I can add context and insight, but when there's something like this... <laughs> the Danish are just weird as well, but... I mean, that's even weirder. Why do they do that? So it comes from two calfems, which is an abdicated word of something that doesn't exist anymore. So the Danes, I think that's even worse. The Danes say something that doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> that's what it says on the tin. Uh, that's a solid, that's a solid six out of 10. Okay, here we have a 450 year old map, as you can clearly see from the title. So it's quite easy to look at this uh, kind of map and go, oh, look at how stupid they were. Look at, look at, look at Antarctica, that's not a thing. And look how crazy South America looks. When realistically, maps are really hard to make. So generally at this point, you have a bit of a science behind map making uh, using a variety obviously, of trigonometry uh, and also set measurements to try and figure out how far things were. So for example, uh, a, a ship traveling around a coast um, would be able to map it quite well. That's why also there's going to be distortions around areas that aren't as easily traversed. Whereas at this point, 1600, somewhere like Europe, people generally know how long it takes to get to places so they can make rough estimations. Having said that, I do want to highlight that there were some maps in history that were just wrong because people couldn't be bothered to get there and they were like told by a king let's say uh to go and make a map they got somewhere and just went eh, that's close enough and then sent it and got paid for it. and so sometimes you have wildly inaccurate maps one thing i do uh enjoy is the inclusion of uh sea monsters which generally happened quite a lot uh, just for decoration i think at this point in the 1600s they didn't genuinely believe that um ah oh, here is where this specific creature was or here's where that creature was uh, it's just one of those things that just makes it look cool. It's beautiful, it's accurate, nine out of 10. I mean, I, the only thing that I could give it a 10 is if I wanted to give it a 10. <laughs> this rating system might be completely subjective and not at all scientific. See, maps like this, I don't understand why they get this many like upvotes um, because Japan is farther north, south, east, and west than Korea. Yeah, <laughs> like, is that crazy? I don't, I don't, I don't see why that would be, like islands exist, yeah. <laughs> Zero out of 10 because it says it's interesting, but it's not. It's a stupid map. It was one out of 10 because it's accurate. <laughs> like it is a map. But then you put a square over it to, to show, yo, look, this is Japan. Uh, come on. Now here's a map uh, in stark contrast, really interesting uh, because it's just stuff that you generally would know, but you can't typically see it visualized. So these different mountain ranges being, used to be one mountain range. And generally, people sleep on geology. I'm gonna sound like the biggest nerd. People sleep on geology. It's really interesting. Like in the UK, for example, um, our plates, um, in terms of the different uh, rock types, it looks like it's ones on its side because of tectonic shifting. What's happened is um, instead of it being different layers of rock, it's shifted to its side. And so you have like an east to west divide uh, as well in certain areas, particularly around sort of uh, the southwest. <laughs> the one thing nerdier than a history uh, and map gamer is, is a geology nerd. But rocks are cool, damn it. This is going to be a seven. It doesn't have any other geology on it, but it's got some reference to geology, damn it. And I'm excited about it. Tectonics are cool. Again, stuff like this, I suppose it is interesting to look at because it, it looks strange uh, according to our uh, projections. But uh, realistically, this is why having a good understanding of maps, I think, is important. Uh, realistically, it's not that important, I suppose. But yeah, you can, because how Earth works, it's a cir it's a globe, it's a circle, it's a globe, therefore you can travel in a straight line. And also things like Africa are massive and Canada's not as big as that. I mean, it's still a very big country, but it's not as big as that. Flat Earthers right now really upset about this. <laughs> I can't believe that's a thing. <laughs> Technology was a mistake. I want to refer you to the map makers from earlier. Uh, if they talk to a... 
and flat earther today that like you got access to all these satellites and all these wondrous technologies for stuff that we could only hope to project i spent my entire life mapping out france for example um france itself was very very well mapped but um took place over several generations of one singular uh, map maker um, and often kings would distort the sizes of uh, their maps. So for example, you'd influence your map maker, your cartographer, to make your kingdom big because it's always nicer to have a big kingdom. So you want to appease your lord, right? So you've got all these complications and you have the ability to look at a map. And then you just go, well, I, I, it looks like it's flat. So, I mean, I suppose I have to give us more like a four because we're three, like it's not that interesting rating on interest and how, how it makes me feel and this doesn't make me feel happy okay so from one level of EDC to another uh response was asked to identify Iran in the map 28 percent uh identify them one guy thought it was Tunisia <laughs> come on boys we made it a couple of people thought it was the UK which is surprising here's the thing with um these kinds of Americans are stupid and I'm gonna sound like uh, I'm, okay I'm not, <laughs> how do I say that I'm not pro-American by, by whilst also not sounding <laughs> anti-American. I'm just, I just think it's like, when you have certain stereotypes, it's very easy to reinforce those biases. So a map that, for example, said 82% um, of people correctly identified, Americans correctly identified this, that wouldn't rise to the surface. So there's an inherent bias in the data there. Um, also, uh, polls themselves aren't great. So for example, 2000 is not a bad, uh, poll size. I, I quite like that, but I'm going to look into this morning consult thing and maybe we can find out a bit more information about it. Because I think a lot of people are willing to just consume and it's fair enough. I mean, you would be scrolling through, you don't really care that much, but you'll see a data set and you'll automatically make assumptions based on that uh, or uh, you'll upvote it or downvote it based on if it uh, adheres your worldview. Okay, so here it seems like this is the Actually, I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to get political with this. Uh, I, I abhor politics on my channel. Uh, but let's have a look. Let's see if we can find something here. Okay, so this is the morning consult where I believe this is from. Poll conducted 4th to the 5th of uh, 2020. I mean, that lines up, right? Wait, 8th of January. When was this? January 4th of 5th. Okay, yeah, so it lines up. See, now this is a way more interesting map to me. Because it's way more amusing. <laughs> Some people selected America. Which is pretty bad. All right, then they've got uh, more voting breakdowns. For example, there's no affiliation with political party in terms of there, there being a correlation. It's only 2,000, it's only one study, but it's just interesting to me to then be able to go and find them. I can't find the actual data itself because if I try to, then I would have to uh, sign in and I'd have to purchase the data. So I can't tell you what the limitations of this are. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying you should take everything seriously um, like this, but it is interesting to sometimes go and look into where these data points come from and also appreciate the fact that why some things rise to the top. Uh, I'm going to go for a, a 5 out of 10 on this one because like it's there is a source on it, so there's that. Uh, obviously, you know why it's there. It's, haha, look at these people. They they messed it up. There's no real like statement to it, but it is accurate, at least, and I was able to follow the source. Speaking of trending, Barbie versus Oppenheimer. I found a lot of people actually uh, online have, have tried to compare this to, uh, for, for example, the election uh, results um, in terms of Republican versus Democrat. Um, and I think the intersection of culture and politics is, is always going to be really, really interesting to me. But then some people draw certain conclusions which I think are uh, sort of misguided. I ain't realistically trying to make any sort of political statement with uh, Barbie or Oppenheimer selection. Uh, is, is, is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Having said that, absolutely obvious why New Mexico wanted to watch Oppenheimer, isn't it? And I speak as someone who watched Oppenheimer and not Barbie, so I can't comment on Barbie, but Oppenheimer's great. <laughs> I'm gonna go for, I mean, it's not claiming to be anything else, so five out of 10. Like if you're not claiming to be anything, then like sure, five out of 10. You're not, you're not trying to say, state, make any statements by it. So it does what it says on the tin, five out of 10. It's just not that interesting. This is what I'm talking about when I say interesting maps. It's so cool. I like stuff like this. The world map according to Google Street View. So the reason I find this cool is that you can you can guess things, right? And I love, I love guessing things. Um, for example, you it's the absence of data that's more interesting than, than the data itself, right? So obviously you can see the US, Europe is, is quite clearly defined, but hmm, certain areas in, in Germany. So then you'd look up, for example, why is there no street view in Germany? And then that leads you down this rabbit hole where, oh, actually, it's going to be back after 10 years halt. So they halted it for 10 years. Why did they do that? Privacy outcries and lawsuits um, led them to halt it. So it's just, it's, yeah, it's interesting to, to find that sort of stuff. 
You've got Tunisia around here in very small. I will zoom in a little bit. You've got Tunisia, one of the only places in, well, in Africa to have some street view. I think there are certain determinants like, hey, it's it's kind of dangerous in certain areas or it's inhabit uh, inhabitable, <laughs> inhospitable in certain areas. So big old blackout around here. Eight out of 10 for the aesthetic because it looks cool. Oh, this is fantastic. Nicosia, Cyprus and the city from today. It's just, the thing is with modern maps, accuracy, right? And so when everything's filled out and everything's accurate, because that's what you expect from a map. A map is no longer a work of art. It is a fact. So when you have liberties, because no one can ever be that accurate back in the day, or at least it was very rare to have high levels of accuracy, you could do something like this where you have, okay, here's the star fort, and now I'm gonna draw individual buildings. These aren't gonna be representative of specific buildings in the city, potentially apart from maybe an iconic one in the center, but they're going to be beautiful nonetheless, and we're gonna use certain colors like this. And whereas a modern map, you're not looking, and I'm, you know, I'm not gonna say that all maps should be artistic, but it is interesting, the sort of transformation from cartography from um, an art and a science to a pure science nowadays. And that's how you know I'm a nerd. <laughs> yeah, the closest you can get to like an aesthetic map is the Google Maps one from earlier, I suppose. That counts, but that's more like taking a map and forcing it to be art. Well, I suppose, isn't that all maps? Anyway, we're, get, we're getting, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give this map, it's a solid eight. It looks cool and I like it. This kind of stuff will always uh, rise to the top in terms of it being US centric and the rural versus urban stuff. It's quite striking to think, wow, look at these massive areas of empty space, but realistically humans don't need that much space to live in. Uh, and so pretty much everyone on earth has maps like these, uh, high density versus low density. Uh, so I suppose it can be kind of startling, but I'm gonna start rating these maps. Four out of 10, it's not, it's not great. Finally, brass tax. Which country has the most attractive people according to Europe? Um, there was an inverse one that I saw of, of, in, of um, the, the least attractive people and, and everyone said England, apart from Turkey who said themselves and Belarus and Russia said Belarus and we said Belgium. But I mean, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> so everyone just thinks of Spanish and Italians. Hey, Mediterranean blood, what can I say? See, now this is an interesting map. Uh, sun tanning versus sun skin whitening, right? Um, and it's a super interesting map until you realize it's not interesting at all. Uh, and I don't mean because it's something on, uh, about something cosmetic. It's because, well, of course, right? Um, you'd think, well, people who are generally darker skinned are going to want to have their skin lightened. People who are lighter skinned are going to be searching up tanning, right? Um, and that's because you're not gonna be searching up skin whitening if you are from Scandinavia, because chances are you have white skin. Until you look at the South Americans, in which case I have no idea what's going on with them. And I, I don't know how I feel about typing into Google, why do South Americans want to be, you know what, screw it. Why do South Americans want to be brown? Okay, so Google is useless. I'm gonna go ahead and guess something here uh, and put your thoughts down in the, uh, in the comments. I'm gonna go ahead and suggest that it's because in these regions, you're gonna have individuals who uh, are lighter skin based on obviously their uh, histories and how they were colonized. And so people who are going to be whiter skin are generally going to try and tan. And I'm going to bet that skin whitening isn't as common um, as sun tanning as a general practice. Um, so guys around here aren't going to need tanning as much. Although Tunisia and Morocco. I've, I've, tried, to, I've tried to glean as much information and, and interest from this map as possible. Um, yeah, I think six out of ten. You know, it's, it's something a little bit different. I think it says 2004 to today. The map isn't 2004 to today. You can't have that in a map. It's here. Like this is 2004 to today. The map isn't. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I feel like the ebbs and flows though, because you're gonna see, you know, obviously based on the season. Whereas skin whitening, everyone wants to be white all time, all year round apparently. Ooh, topographical maps, really cool. Which country has the na most naturally armored area on earth? That's protected. I think it's China. You're wrong. Okay, to be fair, I think they're saying the, the, the person who's posted this map says most armored in terms of the like surrounding areas. And so uh, you have, and they're just looking at mountain ranges realistically here. You're not looking at the other hard uh, terrain. Um, for example, there's a nation down here. Oh God, what did I have? Guiana, I think it is. Um, and they have a border with Venezuela. They still have a border to, um, today, but it's an open border. They don't need to man it because there's just the jungle there is so thick that the Venezuelan army would just wouldn't be able to realistically push through uh, with any sort of modern armaments. So they have to worry about attacks from the sea potentially, but not from uh, 
uh, land. So if you want to talk about like well armored, I, I get like Iran. It's going to be horrible, and it's already has been horrible for people to try and invade uh, Afghanistan. Many different reasons, but also the topography and geography of the land uh, is going to be one of those. Uh, also, most naturally armored area on Earth, the, the islands, seas are horrible to, to logistically get through. I mean, would you rather go through a mountain or would you rather go through a sea? So if you want to say most armored. Uh, air on Earth, look at Britain, Madagascar, I mean, Australia, the islands over here, Japan. I mean, hell, one of the reasons the US was able to develop so much is because they won under a threat from attack. They had um, their opponents in Mexico, realistically. Uh, they fought a war in 1812 against the British after their uh, revolutions. So they had to worry about the Canadians, but otherwise they've had relative peace on the home front. But I like the, the, the cut of the map's jib, so I'm going to give it a 7. School uniform policy by country. So school uniform is prohibited. So Finland is not allowing people to have school uniforms. I like. I think school uniforms are great. Uniforms managed by the government. Uniform is commonplace. So I'm from Britain and well, Tunisia. So school uniform is very much in my psyche. It's weird to me to not have a school uniform. I think that the school uniform is is a good thing because let's say you have disparity between students in terms of whether they're rich or poor. Uh, that's going to show in uh, in terms of them coming to school with different things. Obviously the inverse is that you're saying, okay, well parents have to purchase school uniforms. So well, the easy way to do that is to get the school to provide them for it and the government to do that as well. But that's getting uh, a little bit into politics. But anyway, uh, the yeah, I think any way you can remove children bullying each other, you're never gonna remove it completely. But based on wealth, that's definitely a good idea. So this is cool, where the world wants to move to. So where everyone wants to go. I'd imagine the US would rank quite highly on this list. Um, according to Google search data, hmm, hmm, I don't know about this. And my issues with it stem from these two nations, Tunisia and Morocco, saying Canada and Turkey respectively. Right, let's let's do a little bit of data fact finding here. So uh, for that reason alone. Giving it a 3 out of 10. I don't agree with your methodology. Cool map, though. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. When did women get the right to vote in Europe? Okay, that Swiss one is interesting to me. 1971. Let's find out why that is. Let's gather some context to these maps. Even though adding context to things I don't think is that big of a YouTube uh, category. Let's just do it anyway. It'll be fun. So interestingly, there was an early referendum on, uh, on women's... <laughs> the right to vote for women in Switzerland in, I think, 58 and 59 and was rejected by 67% uh, of Swiss men. So, all right, so, all right, Switzerland. I was hoping there was like a quirk in the rules. Maybe it was like, oh, but not like, uh, these two countries are officially still at war kind of thing, but no, they were just straight up sexist. <laughs> okay. Uh, for the design of the map, I'll give, it, I'll give it a six or seven. I mean, it's a good font. Yeah, the internet's weird. <laughs> Everyone always Googling who has the most attractive people and men. Italy, apparently, going straight in for it. Brazil featuring a couple of times. Again, it's just generally Mediterraneans, man. Apart from Italy, who's consistently saying Sweden. <laughs> and the Cypriots are saying Greece. Nice. I'm surprised people didn't say themselves. I thought that was an option. But um, there's an issue with this. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate my point um, by giving an example. I'll do it practically. So, so here's a, a map that I've just found on the internet. Um, it's YouTubers you like the most. Um, and oh, it's me. Oh, that's great. Europe has just decided that it's it's me. That's great. And that is as valid, in my opinion, a map as this one, which has no sources cited. It has nothing apart from a bunch of colors uh, that aren't really coordinated beyond. Okay, here are some, some colors and then some uh, country names. Uh, there's there's no source. There's no poll linked. There's no methodology. There's nothing. It is as valid as this map. So you should still subscribe because clearly the map tells you to. So 10 out of 10 for this map. 0 out of 10 for this one. Excellent. All right. Geographical uh, for physical geographical maps. I suppose human geography put it in place, but still physical geography. Land reclamation of the uh, Netherlands. Super interesting what the Netherlands have done in their history. Their war on the sea and coastline is an inspiration to us all. They can reclaiming more and more land. And I dare say they've done a very good job of it. Uh, if we let them, they'd probably dam the North Sea, uh, which I'm not opposed to. All right, so this uh, 
It says Wikipedia, we don't have a source for it, but you know, we'll, we'll move onwards. Every battle for the last 4,500 years, Wikipedia mentions. Uh, it's interesting to see the concentration of uh, things around the place. Uh, I, I'd imagine recorded history uh, being uh, a bit easier to come by in Europe, where I would wager a lot of these battles happened more recently. For example, we have a lot of data on the Napoleonic uh, Wars. For example, if you, if you watched my video on the greatest generals, then you'd know I talk about this at length, uh, where, <laughs> which means I probably shouldn't do the same here. But basically, uh, what I'm getting at is it's a, it's a lot easier to record history in places where battles are more diligently recorded. Uh, Japan, a good example of this over here, and then Europe in the last a little while uh, will have that sort of thing. But I mean, no source, five out of 10, it's kind of cool. Ah, oh, propaganda maps. Propaganda maps are amazing. So this is a map uh, showing or trying to scare readers into what would happen in World War One if the US didn't help and the Entente were defeated. Uh, realistically, this is obviously not going to happen. Uh, we've got Japonica over here in the in the West, despite the fact that Japan was on the uh, the side of the Entente. So, a bit of fear mongering there. Some Turconia, and they apparently build <laughs> an extra part from Florida. Sure, you've got an American reservation, which looks like America. So, oh, brilliant bit of uh, map making there. Province of Mexico, uh, there was the Zimmerman telegram that, uh, I mean, some people say it was forged. Some people say uh, it wasn't. Basically, it was from, ostensibly from Germany to Mexico, inviting Mexico to attack the United States um, and the Brits capture this information and then present it to the Americas going, 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 please, look, they're trying to incite people to attack you. These guys are your enemies. Realistically, I was thinking that's not going to happen at all. Uh, you've got barbarians in the north. I like the idea that uh, the Canadians just get off scot-free. They're absolutely fine. Imaginary maps are so much fun. I'm going to do something with imaginary maps. That'd be, that'd be cool. Um, nine out of ten. So the amount of Brazilians in Europe, the only reason I'm showing this is because, look, we have a source at the bottom. I'm very excited about that. So you can look at this and think, okay, maybe there's some validity to it. If you think that there's something wrong with it, you don't just go, well, this map is rubbish. You can go and challenge the source. Otherwise, there are a lot of Brazili more Brazilians in the UK than I would have thought. That's kind of fun. 220,000 Brazilians in the UK. That's impressive. And only 414 up here. Some places, I assume, just don't have any Brazilians. I didn't rank the last one. I don't, uh, five. We'll give it an average score. Empire of Japan at its territorial height, January of 1943. Uh, so it's quite an interesting map because uh, the, uh, in this country at least, um, so I'm not gonna speak for everyone else because I assume the Americans are gonna learn a lot more about the Pacific theater given the fact that they were heavily involved in the Pacific theater. Not to say that other nations weren't, but uh, the Americans quite obviously were the most. For me, it shows a couple of different things. You've got the uh, obvious success of the Japanese military in ridiculously difficult terrain. Um, you have uh, a lot of dense jungles over here. And you can see the real threat that they pose to Australia, uh, leading to a lot of um, uh, quite justified fear. Well, I would say less, less fear of concern regarding Japan. At one point, it was uh, it was theoried that the next stop for Japan was to invade Australia itself. Um, when people think of the Japanese in World War II, uh, and they, they rarely think about the Australian side of things. The Australians uh, fighting Europe uh, would have had uh, concerns at home. But also, interestingly, China. You've got all these almost diseased pocket, and that's basically what it was for Japan. Japan committed incredible uh, atrocities uh, in uh, in China, like the most horrific things you can think of. I think one of uh, the great failings when not discussing the Pacific Theatre, um, because we're, we're very focused on the Nazis uh, for various reasons, uh, is we don't focus on uh, the issues surrounding Japan, um, and we always think of Nazi Germany as being the epitome of, of evil, I suppose, in that war. Um, whereas Japan definitely gives them a run for their money in the atrocities. I don't want to get, I really don't want to get serious with it, but I think it is important to recognize um, these things as well. Um, the only reason I mention that is because there's been some discussion regarding Oppenheimer and uh, the justification for dropping the nuclear bombs. And I think it's, it's, it's horrifically a very interesting discussion to have. Um, about the viewpoints of Japan at the time, as well as the justification for it. Um, one insane stat, and the only thing, the last thing I'll say about this map uh, that is really, it's not even related to the map, but it's quite interesting, is that there were hundreds of thousands of Purple Heart medals uh, produced uh, by the US in anticipation for the invasion of mainland Japan. Uh, and not all of them, I think only about a quarter of them uh, remain 
the United States hasn't produced any more because they haven't needed to. That's how many, how much loss of life was expected on the American side, let alone uh, the Japanese. So interesting. Uh, it's a cool map. Uh, six out of ten, but no source, so five out of ten. Having said that, a map like this doesn't need as much of a source because it's less. It's less about data collection, more about territory. And with something as especially as uh, as dynamic as, as wartime borders, I don't think anyone's going to be too hung up about the minutiae share of details. Okay, the only reason I'm showing this, so countries have been bombed by the US. Um, the only reason I'm showing this is because I like the fact that someone could have, like, you've got amazing maps in the bottom uh, in terms of their store, right? And someone can come and just, the idea that someone purchases this and puts it up on their living room. Cool. Um, either as like an anti-American thing or even worse, a pro-American thing, being like, yo, we did it, boys. Look what we look what we caused. We'll finish with Prussia in the 1800s, overlaid to the Federal Republic of Germany's current borders. Uh, you can see the smattering of, uh, <laughs> of lands that the Prussians held um, all over the place. Yeah, definitely interesting to see the, the migration west of uh, well. I was about to say core German identity, but that's not really fair, is it? Uh, all these areas were still Germany. But just, this is Prussia. You talk about kind of two different states. Yeah, sure, one formed the other, but it's not, you know, not really the same. Still, migration states we saw with Ghana as well earlier is always uh, an interesting one. I mean, Poland's had a journey as well, to be fair. In any case, lads, that is the final map for today. Uh, this is something a little bit different, so if you did enjoy it, please do let me know in the comments down below. Let me know if you want to see more of this kind of content. If you do, let me know. Uh, if you do, make sure to vote by liking uh, the video and subscribing, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Huge shout out to my patrons. Most importantly, Redguard76, Lewis Wright, Ryan B, Atreides, Blenderman, Krilly, Ghostwolf, JDAL52, Xiaomi, Luke, Matthew McHugh, Mike473, Mikey Lewis, Original, Shadow Singer, and Tom. Your support means a lot, guys. Also here, why not watch another video? I mean, it's it's right there. Just just click on it.